Hi, it's the Chief Bonding with board games and RPGs. First of all, new shirt in. Yes, I love World War II aircraft, so when I saw the Corsair with the pirate Corsair, I had to get it. Big airplane. <laughs> so, um, visual whimsy is what I call it. We are returning to my Neuralink series. We have Gomer and Jonah. Jonah are headed out to assist a grandma in Jonah's block. It's not Jonas's grandma, it's Grandma Jenny. We're calling her Grandma Jenny, but everybody calls her Grandma Granny, Grandma Jenny. And she's having problems with some thugs. Um, if you didn't catch the last episode, she had had a nice knock on her door by a very professional woman in a, like a business suit, offered to buy her tenement or her property, rougher part of the hood. And she said no. And the offer was actually pretty nice, but she said she's not interested. She wanted to die here. Uh, she did not want to move. A couple weeks later, thugs are coming around. And so she's called Jonah to get some help. Jonah has was at work and asked his good buddy Gomer, and Gomer is the one with the Neuralink, hey, uh, can you research it? Can you see what's going on? He sees that crime is up like 85%. And he also sees that XRT Realtors has been buying up a lot of these different properties in this depressed neighborhood for about a month. Jonah says, Gomer, let's go. Gomer's resistant because it's a dangerous neighborhood. Again, Gomer sa or Jonah says, come on, let's do it. As they walk out of the building to go to this dangerous neighborhood, my a thought came to me that I think Jonah who's the, the janitor, 50-year-old uh, black male, rough past, but he's just working head down, nose to grindstone, blue collar, uh, kind of created off of a, a gentleman I worked with years ago. So he's street smart, um, but uh, he's just kind of working hard head down. He presumes that Gomer's going to have, you know, some kind of uh, Tesla or something, <laughs> since, since we're dealing with Neuralink. They get out there, and Jonah says, where's your ride? And he says, uh, I take a scooter. <laughs> Jonah's like, what? It's a scooter. I use a scooter. It's, it's just cheaper. You get the app, you hit it. No, come on, man. You got to have a ride. Well, how do you get here? I, I, bus. Bus and walk. Well, we, I can rent you a scooter. A, and, and I think now it's reversed. I think Jonah's like, scooter? You can't go to this hood on a scooter. He goes, it's the easiest way to get there. Quick. You just jet right down there and you don't have to pay any insurance or anything. You don't have to have a car. You don't have to have a garage. <laughs> I think he's getting all that reasonableness why the scooter's great. He's like, the only problem is I don't have a second helmet. He goes, I don't want, I don't want a helmet, Gomer. Uh, I wouldn't wear the helmet. Well, I don't have one. And, and it's, it's quick. <laughs> I think Gomer's not dumb. He realizes. He goes, hey, I don't want to go down there anyway. You can go down there on your own. Just take the bus. He's like, no, no, no. We'll go. We'll go. Rip me up one of them scooters. <laughs> now, this cracked me up because you got Jonah, who's got street cred, but he's 50s. Um, a little bit of a checkered pass. I think he did some time, but he needs Gomer to come with him. He wants to take advantage of the Neuralink that he has and his Grok 4 and, and he's got the Starlink so they can get information as they go. <laughs> but as much as Gomer's nervous about going into a rough part of town, Jonah's nervous about riding the scooter into the rough part of town. No problem renting it. So Gomer's got it. They check him out. He's like, these two are ours. <laughs> I think off they go. Now, I've got to ask. I guarantee Jonah's never been on one of these ever. I've never been on one of them ever, but I was at this convention with guys about my age, and there were dudes dropping left and right because they, they weren't kids anymore. They thought they were. Those things can get up to like 25, sometimes 30 miles an hour, and they would hit a thing and boom, boom, boom. So I'm just going to ask using Mythic. So we are using the Mythic emulator. I'm going to ask the fate chart. 
Is Jonah having any kind of struggles? This would not be in his repertoire. So I think I'll give him a little bit. I mean, I can't believe he's even getting on it. I thought, well, he's not riding double. I can tell you that. But let me first roll, will he even get on it? I think with the 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 trouble he's given Gomer, I think he would, but there's a chance he won't. Near sure thing, 90%, he, he'll, he'll jump on. 59, yes, so he's on. I think we got to go down to 50-50. Is he struggling with the operation? 50 or less is a yes. Oh, it's a seven. That's a hard yes. That means not only is he struggling just to get her going, he's got to take a tumble. <laughs> well, this is like a flip now. So it's got to happen pretty quick. I think there's some struggle with getting her going. I think Jonah's like, Gomer, this is stupid. Why don't you have a car, man? <laughs> He's like, this is cheap. I don't want to store it. He falls down. Let's use, so Jonah's dexterity is not that good. <clears throat> We're currently still using maze rats for um, for this, and, and uh, Jonah's dexterity is zero. So he's still very strong, and uh, he's got a two strength, and he's got a one on his wisdom or yeah will willpower. There's only three stats here. Zero on the dex. So we're going to roll two dice. He's going to tumble. And in order to keep from getting injured, he's got to get a 10. Not too good with no modifiers here. So... Ooh, six. So he is going to have some type of injury. Let's do this. One is the leg. Six is the head. I think we'll have to figure out three, four, and five. We'll see here. Two. All right. So if one is the legs, I think we're coming up into like two, three is torso. Four, five would have been arms, um, upper body, and then head. So two is, I think he like hits his hip. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, I don't think he would break a hip. He's 50. He's still very strong. Um, but he's going to have a little bit of a stinger. And I think he's angry now. We're going to give him what that has done is not only was it embarrassing, and it hurt, and he's got a stinger. So Jonah's coming in angry. And I think he even curses out Gomer a little bit. And says, we ain't doing this again. <laughs> but he's going to do it today. Now the other part. They get down into Jonah's hood. I think before, yeah, they've got to be like four blocks off. He's like, we're not riding right up to Grandma Jenny's house on a scooter. It's not happening. Pull it over. He goes, yeah, but I've already paid for the deal. It doesn't matter. Uh-uh. And there's just, he pulls it over. You just park it and leave it. I think Gomer is irritated because this makes no sense. Why walk the five blocks? It's not logical. Why would we do that if we could? And he's like, just, we're not doing it. It ain't happening. <laughs> and I think Jonah knows what to say. You ride into this part on the scooter, we're, we're damn near in trouble here. You go another five blocks, you're going to get a whoop and just roll on a scooter up. He's like, okay, okay. <laughs> so they're walking in. We know this is a rough neighborhood. Um, we know, hold on, I was going to go in here and think of something random to come up with. But I do have that we are in, the gang in this area is uh, La Costaco. And they say it quick. It's like um, like company, La Costa Company, but La Costa Co. They're just calling themselves the company, La Costa Co. They're going to be walking or moving into their area. So the first thing to ask is, as they start to walk closer and closer to Grandma Jenny's house, do they have any problem, I don't know, with this gang? I think as they first come in, it's going to be a little more unlikely Although the salt and pepper team and Gomer is going to stand out. But 35% chance, 67, no, they don't have a problem. I think uh, Jonah's got a little bit of a uh, of a, a kind of limp going where he's like, God dang, that hip hurts. 
how do you ride these all the time? <laughs> Cobra's like, you get the hang of it. However, you got to know like my main route, they've really done a good job. They've updated the sidewalks. There's even a couple areas. He goes, that's enough. I don't need to know anything else. He goes, well, I was going to tell you, there's even some roads that you can, no, eh, eh. shut up, Gomer. <laughs> He literally doesn't care. He's never riding one again. All right, no problem getting all the way to Grandma Jenny's door. Um, so the question is, are these like, um, are these row houses? I could definitely see them being like old style row houses where there is no, there's no, it's street and back alley. There's no yard. There might be a little area that you could grill something up with. Maybe a little garage off the alley that you could park in. I'm just going to say that's got to be what it is. This doesn't feel like tenements, uh, but it's a very old neighborhood. Rough, beat down, and graffiti. Gomer walking with Jonah prevents any other kind of, you know, clearly Gomer stands out. I do believe this is probably, well, we know it's lower socioeconomic. So Gomer's white doesn't mean the whiteness stands out as much as it is like Gomer doesn't even carry himself. And like a when you're in a rougher area, you got to carry yourself. And he's a little bit pudgy. I think he would make someone that probably would have drawn negative attention, but he's with Jonah. So he's getting a look. I think a few people are calling out to Jonah, you know, and hey, you know, but... Uh, some raised eyebrows on who's Jonah hanging out with, this like soft marshmallowy guy. <laughs> so um, they roll up, um, they're gonna chat with grandma. So I think they knock, grandma Jenny answers, Jonah, sweet as can be, you know, come on in, uh, you came so quickly. So using Une, we're gonna use the conversation set. Um, just mood alone, I don't even need to roll on because this runs from loved to hated. I think it's either loved or friendly. So loved is going to be even. Friendly is just going to be odd. It's odd. So she's super friendly. So, um, and then her, we've got everything from withdrawn to forthcoming. And 69 under friendly is going to be very sociable. So, um, just, you know, I think she's even got some cookies ready. The inside of her, um, row home is the furniture is old, but everything is well taken care of. Um, she's got lots of little, um, like knickknacks and, and, uh, doilies out on her coffee table. And for some reason, I'm picturing clowns with balloons. She loves these little, like, porcelain clowns with balloons. They're kind of everywhere. <laughs> it's like, oh, Gomer's like, what's with the clowns? And Miss Jenny doesn't miss a beat. And I think she's like, well, who might you be? Who did Jonah bring? And he says, I'm Gomer. And she comes over and he shakes his hand. And, she, and he says, I work with Jonah. And he says, oh, well, Jonah, I've never even heard you bring up Gomer. He's like, that's right. <laughs> now, Gomer, or she's like, now, Jonah, don't be snippy. Have a seat, and uh, let me get you guys some cookies. Again, I know a woman just like this, Miss Mary. And she, uh, so uh, some cookies come out. She's like, do you want a little bit of milk with that? I think they're like, nope. Um, uh, I think Gomer wants the milk, and Jonah gives him a little bit of the eye. So here's always the concern. She's on a tight budget. I think Jonah is like, the cookies are made, but you don't need to drink her milk. But he can't say that. If he says that, Miss, I almost called her Miss Mary, Miss Jenny would be, or Grandma Jenny would be pissed. So he lets it slide, but he's going to talk to him later. Says, the cookie's been made. Don't drink her milk. <laughs> you get water. <laughs> Got it. All right. So we know it's sociable. Her bearing. Now, this is a little odd, and I may skip it, because this is wanting to figure out scheming, insane, friendly, hostile. Matter of fact, I'm going to skip bearing, but I want to go down to table eight, the NPC focus. What is her focus? 70. We know, okay, it just says recent scene. Well, that tells me right off the bat, she has noticed immediately that Jonah's favoring that hip, 
And she's like, Jonah, baby, what happened to the hip? You're even a little dirty. <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's, it's, it's nothing, Grandma Jenny. And Gomer said, he fell down when we were on a scooter. <laughs> and he's like, I think he catches an elbow. <laughs> she's like, baby, what are you doing on a scooter? You're no spring chicken. I think Grandma Jenny's like in her 80s. He's like, I thought old Gomer had a car. He doesn't. Scooters. <laughs> I wanted to get down here quick and just make sure you're all right, Grandma Jenny. And she's like, oh, baby. And they're eating some of these cookies. Great chocolate chip cookies. I think she even throws in a couple Reese's Pieces. Not overdone. Just one snuck in every once in a while. Um, so uh, Gomer points it out. She's like, yeah, babe, that's one of Grandma Jenny's secrets. Every once in a while, you're going to get a little bit of peanut butter. <laughs> He's like, I love peanut butter. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and Capri Sun. Great, great lunch. <laughs> she says, I don't know about the Capri Sun, but I'm glad you like the Reese's Pieces. All right, so um, we know that she was concerned about Jonah's hip. What is her MPC verb and noun? So motivation verb is 52. 52 is strive. All right. That seems to fit old Grandma Jenny. And 23 under the noun. Ooh, enemies. Well, perfect. Well, this is fine. She's like, Jonah, I'm not sure why you brought Gomer, but these Lacosta Co. don't seem to be playing around. Now, I'm not having it. Because what is she doing here? Strive enemies. She goes, but I'm too old to be playing these games, honey. I'm just too old. And he's like, I think Jonah's like, well, what's the read of the neighborhood? And she says, these Lacosticos started showing up just about a week ago. Everybody saw a little Miss Fancy walking around in her business suit. And offering way more than the properties are worth. And I'm going to tell you, Jonah, some of the people, several of the people took the deal. And now with La Costa Co. walking around, there's more people taking the deal. But I'm not selling. I'll die here. I don't care if they kill me here, but I'm going to die here. And Jonah says, well, that's why I brought Gomer. Um, right off the bat, he noticed that um, there's a realtor that's buying up most of this individual neighborhood, this little block, matches exactly what you're saying. And we have seen that crime is up, but I don't even remember La Costa Co. really moving in this area. This, this is a couple blocks off. And she goes, it's La Costa Co. She even knows one of them. I've got a list of some names here. So I want to know, um, uh, I've got six names. Number five, she knows, one, two, three, four, she knows Peto. She says, you know, Peto was one of the ones that came over. I've known him since he was two when they moved in, that little Puerto Rican family. All right, so, and Peto is, I got some attributes. One, two, three, angry. You know, he was always even an angry boy. And he's still angry, Jonah. He's angry all the time. He's, I said, Peto. You used to eat my cookies. What do you mean threatening me to get out of the house, Peto? And he, he called me out my name. And Gomer's like, no. She's like, yeah. He called me an old B. Mm. And I said, Peto, if your father was around, he would slap your face. And he looked a little bit like embarrassed for a second, but he had another guy with him and immediately that anger came back. And Jonah, I thought he was going to hit me right there. And I think Jonah's steaming a little bit. Mm. He's like, peto has been nothing but trouble ever since he was about 10. But I'm still surprised he would be coming around here acting this way. And she goes, that's why I called you Jonah. Something ain't right. Something ain't right, baby. Have another cookie. <laughs> All right, we know Peto. Peto's angry. We got to bring it out here. 
Oh, Peto, and Peto is angry. Little boy. You've been living in the area for a while. Uh, Puerto Rican, even. My wife's Puerto Rican. She won't like that I got a mean Peto in here. All right, Puerto Rico. All right. Uh, I guarantee Jonah knows where Peto and probably the Costaco hang out. And I don't think he's one to wait. No, he's not one to wait at all. He's like, Gomer, finish up your cookies and your milk. <laughs> and we'll go pay. Oh, you know what? What if he went to Peto's parents' house? Oh, I like that. That's a smarter move than going to Peto himself. It's a little bit coming around the side, though but it's smart. So yes, that's what he's going to do. He's going to go to Peto's parents' house. All right, got it. The, the matriarchs are strong in the Puerto Rican family. So they finish. I want to see, is there a scene change though? Does anything interrupt? Using Mythic, we're at cast factor five. Everything's been going good. Um, and if we get um, our chaos number five or less, nine. So nothing happens. It could have been an interrupt or an altered scene. No need to go into it since it didn't happen. They walk over. Jonah knocks. Gomer's a fish out of water just standing there. I think he is running his Grok 4 and having the address run just internally with his Neuralink controls. He's getting address. I think he's got 911 on a speed dial in case something goes down. That's exactly what he has. No way law enforcement would get there in time, but he's got it. It's like his security blanket. So I think we got to ask a couple of questions. I would imagine it's, it's pretty likely. So let's go with very likely that somebody is home. I would think Peto's mother would be at home, but maybe she's working 85 or less. She's home. Ooh, 88 doubles, but above our cast factor. There's nobody home. Interesting. Okay, so that's not going to work. Jonah's not going to waste time, so we're back to go down to kind of the block that most of La Costa Co. hang out on and go find Peto. Ooh. So there's no answer. I think Gomer's like, we can, we can ride back. We can just ride on back to work. And Jonah's like, mm -mm. now we got to find Peto. He's like, Peto, she said Peto's angry. He's like, yeah, me too. I'm angry as hell. Oh, yeah, that's right. Gomer's just like, mm. He's like, should I, should I call 911 now? <laughs> Ooh, I got it. You know what he's going to do? He's going to call and just call 911. It's all done like via text or whatever, or even a, a Grok 4 voiceover to 911 that he's got arranged out through his Neuralink. And he's just going to call in um, like a suspicious Puerto Rican, which wouldn't fit to any of them, in the general area of where they're at, hoping... This brings LEO's law enforcement into the area. Rough neighborhood? God, maybe. Let's just do, I think it's unlikely though. Usually an anonymous, you know, I'm sure Grok4 routed it through some secure router or something. So they get some anonymous call that there's a, an angry Puerto Rican walking around maybe threatening people named Peto. Police oftentimes are going to be overly worked in these areas and wouldn't respond to an anonymous call if somebody's just walking around acting a fool. But there's always a chance that there's a car or an officer on foot patrol in the area. So we'll go with unlikely, 35 or less, 35 or less, six. Holy moly, that's a hard yes. Wow. Well, way to go, Gomer. So we're going to know that there is actually a two-officer patrol car in the area or it will be coming into the area because it would take a while to get there. So that's nice though. They're gonna have a two officer squad car. I like it. Now, Jonah doesn't even know the call has been placed. This has all been done via Neuralink. Um, just a little safety factor for Gomer. They walk deeper into La Costa Co territory. Does 50-50 no, nah, I think it's probably a little more likely. It's not like Peto's out working a job. I think it's likely 75% to 
Jonah, Sites, Peto, and probably some buddies. 75 or less, 91. No, doesn't find Peto. Does the, do other gang members find him though? 75 or less, 68, so yes, but it's not gonna be Peto. So we're looking for Peto. We've got some other names on here. So let's find, there's two of them. These are gonna be two other thugs that are coming in. Who are they gonna be? Peto's out. Six is going to be um, Bino, Bino, uh, all right, or Bano. No, I think it's, well, it's B-E, so it's Bano. I did get these on a Spanish name site. Bano, and then what is Bano's attitude? Bano's attitude is a three, well, he's also angry. You've got a lot of angry Lacostico here. Angry Bano. Let me put a little bay in there. All right, two. All right, two is Faustino. Now, if we get another three, we're going to just know that La Costa Co is an angry group of kids. Two. So we did not get angry. Oh, slow. Faustino's a little slow. So he's a little bit slow on the intelligence side. But old Bano, he's angry. He's angry, just like Peto. Peto and Bano and Faustino. We got a lot of O's going on. <laughs> All right. So Peto's not around, but right off the bat, Peto leaning in with Faustino behind him comes up and says, I think he goes to Jonah. Uh, they may not know each other by name, but he would know him by sight. He walks up to Jonah with a lot of attitude, a lot of anger. He says, why you got this chub down here in our area? You can tell he's a fish out of water. He don't belong. He don't belong. Okay, now we know Jonah. If it was young Jonah, I think it would be hit him. But old Jonah's 50. He still wants to hit him, but he's done time. He doesn't want to get into a fight. He's not looking to, and this it really isn't a front on Jonah. It's all at Gomer. And Gomer's just sitting there quiet, and scared. Now, we did say there's a squad car in the area, but I don't know if this would draw that attention yet. But there's a chance. So let's see. Let's just go with it's a low chance. No way. It seems too quick. But 15 or less, uh, 53. So no, not yet. This will be an unknown. We'll bump that up as we go here with conversation. I'll just check and see if squad car comes in. Jonah just cuts to the chase. This isn't about Gomer. He says, why is La Costa Co messing with Grandma Jenny? Yeah, right to the point. Right to the point. There's enough edge in there. And we are dealing with the Grandma. I think this catches catches Bano a little bit flat-footed. Here he comes at the, uh, the pudgy marshmallow white dude, and Grandma Jenny's coming back, and Jonah is nobody to mess around with. I think that's known. People would know his street cred is history. Bano is like, well, let's go. Well, let's find out what he would be like. I think as far as this goes, I don't think this would be hated, but well, it's not going to be loved either. I don't need his mood. We already know he's an angry dude. Let's go down to whatever his focus is. I just want to know what's his focus. 46. 46 puts his focus at allies. So he's talking about his buddies. And so he said, He's like, La Costa Co wants the block cleared. It's our block now. And Joan is like, when did you get into caring about real estate over there? You've always cared about real estate over here, meaning this is where you belong. You don't usually hang or belong over there. And being its allies, he's like, we changed our mind. Now we control that too. He's like, but you don't kick grandmas out of their houses. You don't threaten grandma Jenny. There's an anger that's visceral, just sitting below the surface. Do the cops show up? Let's go with very unlikely, 25%. Ooh, five. Yeah, that's even a hard yes. Wow. Okay, so right as that said, maybe you can see Jonah leaning in, doing a little intimidation. You get a little whoop, whoop, whoop. 
which is just bumping the siren a little bit and the car rolls up. I guess the focus here could backfire. Is the focus going to be on Jonah or is it going to be on Bano? I think it's going to be on Bano. They would know, the cops would know that Bano's a, a problem. So who are the cops focusing on? I think it's likely 75% they're focused on Bano and Faustino. 67, so close, but yeah, so... Um, I think the boop, boop, and immediately, like, you know, they back up a little bit. Who knows if they're carrying, meaning they might have guns or weapons on them. Um, but the cops roll up, they get out. They don't stay in the car, they get out. These cops um, were, they know they're working in a high danger area. And immediately they're on Bano. Bano, what are you doing? And I think they're also like, who are you and who is this guy? Meaning, Jonah and who is this guy's the white dude and I think Jonah stays quiet and Bano's like why are you always messing with us this is this is where we live this is where we're, we're just out here talking we're just out here talking I think Gomer starts to talk because <laughs> he even had the police on the call I think he says well we're having a problem and no doubt Jonah kind of like little fist pokes him, nothing hard, but right on the side, like, oh. And uh, I think the other officer's like, what is this? What are you doing? What were you asking? And he's like, nothing, nothing. Yeah, he's not looking for trouble. And I think the cops are like, IDs. And Bano, I already got your info. Same with you, Faustino, you and you. So the IDs come out and they jot down Jonah's information and Gomer's information. And I think the focus is to Gomer. What are you doing down here? You don't live anywhere close. And he's and Jonah's like, he's with me. We were seeing Grandma Jenny. And I think the guy's just like, I know a Miss Mary in, in a rough part of town where I work. These guys would be like, oh. I think that smooths it out. But there's no way there's any more conversation going on with Bano or Faustino at this point in time with the cops there. I think they're checked. They don't have any warrants. This would be a good time for Jonah to tell Bano, leave Grandma Jenny alone. That's it. Forget Grandma Jenny. Back to the allies. Bano says, it's just business, Jonah. Just business as they're walking away. Okay. Scene. We'll assume they got out of there, no problem with the scooters. And we will return probably to them at work later to figure out what's going on here. So as they track down, this particular mission is to get La Costa Co. threat off of Grandma Jenny. Probably a little harder thing to deal with than you can imagine, especially with the real estate stuff. I do think Jonah asked Gomer, hey, can you use your thing there and dig a little bit deeper and try to find out what's going on? And did you ring the cops? He's like, yes. <laughs> He's like, you dumbass. And he goes, no, that was, uh, it was scary. Man, we didn't get to find out all the information we needed. We can't ask all these questions with the cops hanging around. And who knows who they're working for? He goes, what are you talking about? They're the cops. He goes, man, you don't know nothing. Now, here's the interesting thing. Cops shouldn't be working for anybody, but have there been dirty cops? Sure. So Jonah doesn't trust them at all. Got it. All right. Well, we're a step in. We've got a cast of characters. We got Grandma Jenny's great cookies. And I think, well, we'll find out when we come back, it will be what has Gomer using Grok 4 been able to learn? I don't know if he would have gang but i guess he could look through criminal files let me make a note and he's going to look more into the realtor see if we can figure out who this woman is because that would be the next logical place you've tried to get a hold of peto and find out what the heck he's doing messing with miss jenny but now we're going to figure out what we can do with the realtor we might even before they go home <laughs> see if it's within scooter riding distance um, I imagine that's in another part of town, so I'm pretty comfortable. Yeah, the, 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 the office for the realtors is not going to be down in this area. 
We will save that for another day. And I think Jonah's hip is killing him. He's got to go take something <laughs> for the pain. All right, Chief, bonding with board games and RPGs with Neuralink, the RPG having fun in the future. See ya, bye.